happens. And she was saying, in Vancouver, there's a number of long-term activists that are not getting involved in Occupy. Uh, I think that's true in a lot of places, and I think part of it is many long-term activists are already so occupied <laughs> with the activism they're already doing that it's hard to add on top of it another whole social movement. Uh, and for those of us who have been long-term activists, I think it's important to know as much as we give to the Occupy movement that those other things that we have been doing are still important and they still are vital and we don't want to just drop them and abandon them. We need to really carefully kind of marshal our energies and figure out how we can maintain them, keep them going, and how the Occupy movement can give them energy rather than drain energy from them. Because um, the Occupy movement is also kind of it's like the action that never ends. <laughs> you know, back when we were blockading Seattle or something, you would work your butt off for weeks and months leading up to the action. You'd have a tense week or two where you're on the street, maybe you're in jail, you're supporting people in jail, you're working, 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 working. Then you crash and you go home for a while <laughs> and you need to kind of recover. Um, but the Occupy movement, it never ends, right? There's no time, you know, right? The, the occupation is your home. There's nowhere to go. So we have to get really good at being able to kind of set our own boundaries and remember and learn to do our own self-care around it. Because otherwise, if we burn out, then that's not really going to serve the movement in the long run. Um, I think, yeah, see, I don't think that there's one way social change happens. I think it happens on multiple, multiple levels. And that's, again, another reason why I think we, instead of getting into these things of my way is the right way, or my tactic is the right way, or my cause is the most important cause, we've got to understand that all of these causes are important. The thing that we are contesting is so huge and overarching and the need to be creative and to invent new things is so enormous that we really need a multiplicity of approaches, not just one. And so um, I think if we can understand that, then we can really support all the kinds of activism people are doing. Um, and again, look at say, what are some of the ways the Occupy movement can help bring some attention. Uh, you know, in San Francisco, uh, some people from the Occupy movement have been supporting people who are trying to take back homes that have been foreclosed. Uh, in Oakland, you know, they call the general strike. Uh, in other places, in Washington, D.C., one of the actions we had while I was back there was also around the Keystone Pipeline. Um, finding out what are the key issues you in your area, in your place, and how do we support like them rather than expecting the people to drop what they're doing to support us, I think will help the movement grow a lot stronger. And finally I'll say, like, committing yourself to a movie, to movement, it's kind of like falling in love, <laughs> right? You know, when you fall in love, no matter how many times you've been hurt before, there's still that part of you that goes, oh, this is it, this is it. You know, someone can really love me and, and care for me and I can love them and this could actually work out and we could be happy. <laughs> and uh, with the movement, it's like, wow, this could be it. We could really do it. We could really change the world. You know, and those of us who've been around for a long time, like we've had our hearts broken a number of times. <laughs> by movements, by relationships, you know. Um, so there are maybe activists out there that are just like, you know, they're still heartbroken from their last movement. <laughs> they aren't quite able to believe in this one yet, you know. It may take a while and they kind of go, oh, all right, that, you know, that person was really attractive, but before I throw my heart and soul into this, and I want to make sure that uh, they aren't already committed to somebody else. I mean, they aren't about to go off and meditate in the jungles of Thailand for the next five years. <laughs> so, a little patience, Michael.